Welcome to the St. Regis Langkawi here in Malaysia, which is a country that has only recently reopened to tourism after two years of being closed due to the pandemic. That's very much a rapidly emerging theme across countries around the world right now who are reopening their borders to travelers one by one to welcome back the post-pandemic travel boom. But it's not all fun and games either because there's a series of challenges that you're gonna have to deal with as you plan your post-pandemic trips, namely the fact that everything is getting so damn expensive. And so in this video, we're gonna cover some of the major countries around the world that have recently loosen their border policies, as well as some of the ways that you can deal with the challenges of the rising cost of travel over the next few years. We'll start here in Malaysia in the heart of Southeast Asia, which is a region that has been rapidly reopening over the past few months. To get here to Malaysia as a fully vaccinated traveler, I had to take an RT-PCR test within two days of departure of the first leg of the journey. And that's very much a commonplace requirement across much of the region. If you're looking to go to Indonesia, maybe check out Bali, then you're gonna need to take a PCR test within 48 hours of departure. Make sure you're clear on the difference between 48 hours for some countries and two calendar days for other countries, because that could really trip you up easily if you don't get it right. And there are some countries that allow a cheaper RT lamp test in addition to the PCR test, like South Korea if you're looking forward to getting your kimchi fix, or Vietnam if you're craving some banh mi's, phas, or bun cha khas. Some countries are even taking things a few steps further and making it even easier for travelers to visit. Singapore, for example, now allows you to take an antigen test within two days of departure, which is gonna be much cheaper and easier to find, especially if you're hopping around countries in the region. And meanwhile, if we hop down to the Oceania region, well, Australia has fully dropped any pre-arrival testing requirements as of April 17th, which means that we can just hop on any flight down under and enter the country just like the good old days. And what's more, it's only a few more weeks to go until New Zealand also fully reopens to vaccinated travelers. You'll need either a PCR test within 48 hours or an antigen test within 24 hours of the first international leg departing from New Zealand in order to enter this country that has been closed off for far too long and rediscover all of its beauties. Indeed, if we take a look across the Asia Pacific region as a whole, we can see that it's really only Japan and China and its constituents that are still closed to tourism. And hopefully it won't be long until we can report good news that those countries will once again be reopening to tourism as well. Of course, even with Asia reopening, you might still find it challenging to actually get yourself down here because of the high flights prices that we're seeing these days. Studies show that flights, car rentals, and hotels are 12%, 19%, and 40% more expensive than they were one year ago in the spring of 2021. And that's pretty wild. So what do we do in the face of these rising costs of travel? Well, my first piece of advice might be a surprising one, and that's actually to be patient and wait a little while until you take your trip. Not only will you be able to make your booking right now for one year from now and benefit from the lowest prices possible and the best award availability if you're redeeming points for business class at the very end of the schedule, but also you might just have have a better experience. I can tell you that based on my one week here in Malaysia, just after the country has reopened, it isn't without its challenges in a country that's just starting to get used to welcoming back visitors once again. Some attractions might be closed and there might be service issues here and there. And so if you're to wait a little while, you might just have a more normal experience once you start traveling again. But what if you're feeling impatient and you just wanna travel as soon as possible? Well, we're gonna talk about a few other tips for saving money in this environment later on in the video, so make sure to stick around. Now, even though Asia's getting all of the hype in terms of countries reopening their borders to tourism, there's still some countries that have long been open, but have now further relaxed their border restrictions, and this might make your journey a little bit smoother. In Europe, for example, Poland, Romania, Sweden, the Netherlands, and as of recently, the United Kingdom, have scrapped all their travel restrictions entirely, which means that there's no longer any need to fill in any forms or show any documents, whether that's proof of vaccination or a pre-arrival test before your journey begins to these countries. The lack of a proof of vaccination requirement might just be a good thing for the select few of you watching this video who don't have one. I mean, you still can't board a flight departing Canada if you don't have proof of vaccination, but these countries are not that far away if you wanna row your boat. It is worth noting, however, that not all European countries have adopted the same mindset in terms of loosening their travel restrictions entirely. For example, if you're going to France, Greece, or Austria, you still need to show your proof of vaccination. And what's more, if it's been more than 270 days since your second dose, then you'll need to get a booster shot or get a negative test before you're able to enter the countries. And speaking of going to Europe, we've talked about the fact that flight, hotel, and car rental prices have skyrocketed since this time last year, but one 
mode of transport that hasn't gotten more expensive is cruises. So now might just be the time to book yourself a transatlantic cruise and get yourself to Europe for the summer. If however, you're still interested in flying, well, now is very much the time that booking flights on points is gonna be a much better deal and a much better way to book than booking flights with cash. And one major reason is the sheer flexibility that's afforded to you when you book flights on points. For example, if you were to pay outright for a ticket, then usually you're locked into the price. If the flight is super expensive right now, but it gets cheaper in the future, there's no option for you to actually get that difference back. But let's say you redeem Aeroplan points for an Air Canada flight instead. There's a dynamic pricing model, so even if you pay more right now, if the flight gets cheaper in points in the future, you can actually take advantage of Aeroplan's free change policy and get that flight difference refunded back to you. And even if your plans completely change and you need to cancel the trip, well, well, Aeroplan doesn't have a free cancellation policy anymore, but the free change policy does allow you to upgrade from a regular fare that has no free cancellations to a latitude or a business flexible fare that does have free cancellations. And so effectively the free cancellation policy is still around. There's just some extra steps involved and you do need to call the Aeroplan call center in order to make this change. So like I mentioned earlier, you should definitely already be thinking about booking your travel for the rest of this year and early 2023 in order to lock in the cheapest pricing. But if you do have travel coming up in the next few months, then now more than ever, it's definitely a better deal to pay using points and have that guaranteed extra flexibility than paying cash and being locked into the high prices. Now, as I'm making this video, I can't help but feel a little bit emotional and excited that travel is finally coming back and revenge travel is well and truly on its way. Drop the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you feel the same. It's gonna be an exciting next few years of travel content and you definitely don't wanna miss out. So after talking about Asia and Europe, that brings us over to the Americas, where I'm pleased to announce that the country with the strictest travel restrictions, our very own Canada, has finally relaxed them a little bit. As of April 1st, 2022, travelers no longer need to present any type of pre-arrival test before coming back to Canada, whether that's a PCR, a lamp, or an antigen test, and there will be no on-arrival testing either, except for on a limited randomized basis. Basically, as long as you're fully vaccinated, you can enter Canada without the COVID era obstacles of testing or quarantine for the first time since March, 2020. I know for a lot of Canadian travelers, the testing requirement before coming back to Canada was always a major obstacle because you were never sure whether there was a chance that you might test positive abroad or commit some other type of mistake that gets you quarantined involuntarily in a foreign country. So the removal of testing requirements before coming back to Canada makes it a lot less risky to travel abroad these days. And I think that's very much the reason that we're seeing demand, bookings, prices, and competition for award availability soaring for international travel departing out of Canada. And now you know that booking as far ahead as possible, planning in advance, and leveraging the flexibility of redeeming points is the best way to book your travels over the next few years. You'll definitely need to collect a boatload of points in order to fund all your trips that you want to take. And thankfully, American Express has some superior welcome bonuses on the market right now that will allow you to supercharge your points balances and fund those future trips. And you can check out this video on screen right now to learn more about these sky high welcome bonuses. And I'll see you in that video.